Hi guys, today we're going to learn how to take some information about the concentration of carbon dioxide and then create a graph out of that to see how carbon dioxide has changed over time, both on a monthly time period and then an annual or yearly time period. So you should have the spreadsheet open and you'll need to make a copy for yourself so that you can make the graphs and then copy those graphs and put them into your other worksheet that you're working on with the questions on it. Um, notice there's two tabs down here. One has monthly CO2 values from January of 1991 to December of 1995, so it has five years of monthly data. And then the other tab has the annual uh, average for that year of car carbon dioxide. And notice that the CO2 is labeled in PPM, which stands for parts per million. And that's a way that we can measure small amounts of something uh, like in the atmosphere or in water. So we're going to go ahead and start graphing the monthly CO2. And the, this is pretty simple to graph. We're going to click and click on the month here and we're going to hold our mouse down and drag to select all of this data. Make sure you don't select any empty cells. Then you're going to come up to the insert menu. We're going to insert a chart and it's going to um, put a line chart in here and that's fine. I think a scatter plot works a little bit better for this. So under the chart editor, I'm going to go ahead and change this to scatter plot, which I passed right here. Now, this doesn't give us much of a good uh, trend pattern. What we want to do is get rid of a bunch of this white space down here because there's way too much white space. And so under the customize, by the way, this is the chart editor. And if you click off of it, it goes away. If you click on your chart and you're like, how do I edit it? Then you just come over here uh, to the little menu, snowman menu, and click edit chart. And that'll bring everything up. And if you click on customize and set up, there's a whole bunch of options that you can use here. I want to go to customize because I want to change where my uh, chart starts and I want to change it to about uh, 350 because my 354 parts per million is where my data point actually starts here. So let's go to the vertical axis under customize vertical axis and we're going to make the minimum value for that 350 parts per million. That's going to give us a little bit better trend on what's going on here. Now the other thing I want to do is go ahead uh, and add a line of best fit just so I can see what's going on here a little bit better. So that's going to be under series and click on series and scroll down to trend line and we're going to add a trend line. Um, we actually want to add a trend line that follows our dots here and so I'm going to go ahead and under type of trend line I'm going to do a moving average and that'll follow the trend here. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how the CO2 concentration is changing from month to month throughout a five-year period, and you should see a pretty strong trend there. Um, what should our graph also have? Well, either a title or a caption, and we'll just go ahead and, and leave this title here. And then uh, you have your y-axis labeled, with which is our, our dependent variable, the CO2 parts per million, and then our uh, x-axis is labeled by month. All right, this looks pretty good. Now to export this chart to copy it, we can click on again the snowman here. We can click on this and we can copy the chart. And then whenever you paste it over into your document, just paste it unlinked. And that way, if you make any changes to this sheet, it won't change your graph. Okay, now one thing to notice, they're gonna answer some questions now after you paste this into your document about what changes. This is called a Keeling curve. CO2 levels move up and down throughout a year's period. Why is this? I want you to think about uh, photosynthesis and carbon dioxide. So whenever you're analyzing this graph, think about what's going on with plants in the spring and the summer compared to what's going on with them in the fall and the winter time, and think about how that might affect the CO2 concentration. Okay, now let's go ahead and see how CO2 has changed on a yearly average basis. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to come over and select our data. I just clicked on the annual CO2 tab and we'll click and select, drag and select all of the information that we're given here. And we're going to insert a chart. And again, it's going to give us a scatter plot here, which is fine. We'll go ahead and keep that. Uh, we do have our axis labeled CO2 parts per million, and we have our year labeled. Now we do have a bunch of white space down in here again. And so let's go ahead and change that. Remember, come up here to customize. And then our vertical axis is the one that we want to start differently. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and put our minimum value here to be 300 and see how that changes our graph. That looks a little bit better. So we can see a very steady increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide over time. Um, let's go ahead and if we want to add a trend line to this, we could do that as well. So we'll close the vertical axis and we'll go to series and go down to trend line. Um, instead of being straight, this might be more of like an exponential trend or a polynomial trend kind of fits that line better. So we'll leave it there. Uh, and so that gives us again and just a general trend of what's going on. Uh, now that we have our axes labeled and we have our trend line and data looks good, again, we can go ahead and copy this chart and then we can paste it unlinked into our other data sheet and then use that to answer the questions. All right. Thanks for watching.